of the Holy War by John Bunyan. To the reader. Tis strange to me that they that love to tell things done of old, yea, and th do excel their equals in historiology, speak not of Mansell's wars, but let them lie, dead like old fables, or such worthless things, that to the reader no advantage brings, when men let them make what they will their own, till they know this are to themselves unknown. Of stories I well know there's divers sorts, some foreign, some domestic, and reports are thereof made, as fancy leads the writers, by books a man may guess at the inditers. Some will again of that which never was, nor will be fain in that without a cause. Such matter raise such mountains, tell such things of men of laws, of countries, and of kings, and in their stories seem to be so sage, and with such gravity clothe every page, that though their front piece say all is vain, yet to their way disciples they obtain. But readers, I have somewhat else to do than with vain stories thus to trouble you. What here I say, some men do know so well, they can with tears and joy the story tell. The town of Mansoul is well known to many, nor are her troubles doubted by any, that are acquainted with those histories that Mansoul and her wars anatomize, then lend thine ear to what I do relate, touching the town of Mansoul and her state, how she was lost, took captive, made a slave, and how against him set that should her save, yet how by hostile ways she did oppose her lord, and with his enemy did close, for they are true, he that will them deny must needs the best of records vilify. For my part, I myself was in the town, both when twas set up and when pulling down. I saw Diabolus in his possession, and Mansell also under his oppression. Yea, I was there when she owed him for lord, and to him did submit with one accord. When Mansell trampled upon things divine, and wallowed in filth as doth a swine, when she betook herself upon her arms, fought her Emmanuel, despised his charms, then I was there, and did rejoice to see Diabolus and Mansoul so agree. Let no man then count me a fable-maker, nor make my name or credit a partaker of their derision what is here in view of mine own knowledge i dare say is true i saw the prince's armed men come down by troops by thousands to besiege the town i saw the captains heard the trumpets sound and how his forces covered all the ground yea how they set themselves in battle ray i shall remember to my dying day i saw the colors waving in the wind and they within to mischief, how combine to ruin Mansoul and to make away her primed mobile without delay. I saw the mounts cast up against the town, and how the slings were placed to beat it down. I heard the stones fly whizzing by mine ears, what longer kept in mind than got in fears. I heard them fall, and saw what work they made, and how old Moors did cover with his shade. The face of Mansoul, I heard her cry, Woe worth the day, in dying I shall die. I saw the battering rams, and how they played, To beat ope ere gate, and I was afraid, Not only ere gate, but the very town, Would by those battering rams be beaten down. I saw the fights, and heard the captain shout, And each in battle saw who faced about. I saw who wounded were, and who were slain, and who, when dead, would come to life again. I heard the cries of those that wounded were, while others fought like men bereft of fear. And while they cry, kill, kill, was in mine ears, the gutters ran not so with blood as tears. Indeed, the captains did not always fight, but then they would molest us day and night. Their cry, up, fall on, let us take the town, kept us from sleeping or from lying down. I was there when the gates were broken ope, and saw how Mansoul then was stripped of hope. I saw the captains march into the town, and how they fought and did their foes cut down. I heard the prince did Bonerges go up to the castle and there seize his foe. 
and saw him and his fellows bring him down in chains of great contempt quite through the town. I saw Emmanuel when he possessed his town of Mansoul, and how greatly blessed a town his gallant town of Mansoul was when she received his pardon, lived his laws. When the Diablins were caught, when tried and went to execution brought, then I was there, yea, I was standing by. When Mansoul did the rebels crucify, I also saw Mansoul clad all in white, and heard her prince call her his heart's delight. I saw him put upon her chains of gold and rings and bracelets goodly to behold. What shall I say? I heard the people's cries and saw the prince wipe tears from Mansoul's eyes. I heard the groans and saw the joy of many. Tell you of all, I neither will nor can I, but by what here I say, you well may see that Mansell's matchless wars no fables be. Mansell, the desire of both princes was, one keep his gain would, t'other gain his loss. Diabolus would cry, the town is mine. Emmanuel would plead a right divine. And to his Mansoul, then to blows they go, and Mansoul cries, These wars will me undo. Mansoul, her wars seemed endless in her eyes. She'd lost by one becomes another's prize. And he again that lost her last would swear, Half her I will, or her in pieces tear. Mansoul, it was the very seat of war, wherefore her troubles greater were by far than only where the noise of war is heard, or where the shaking of a sword is feared, or only where small skirmishes are fought, or where the fancy fighteth with a thought. She saw the swords of fighting men made red, and heard the cries of those with them wounded. Must not her frights then be much more by far than theirs that two such doing strangers are? Or theirs that hear the beating of a drum, but not made fly for fear from house and home. Man's soul not only heard the trumpet sound, but saw her gallants gasping on the ground. Wherefore, we must not think that she could rest with them whose greatest earnest is but jest. Or were the blustering threatening of great wars do end in parleys or in wording jars. Man's soul, her mighty wars they did portend her weal or woe and that world without end wherefore she must be more concerned than they whose fears begin and end the self same day or where none other harm doth come to him that is engaged but loss of life or limb as all must needs confess, that now do dwell in universe, and can this story tell, count me not then with them that to amaze the people set them on the stars to gaze, insinuating with much confidence that each of them is now the residence of some brave creatures, yea, a world they will have. In each star, though it be past their skill to make it manifest to any man, that reason hath, or till his fingers can. But I have too long held thee in the porch, and kept thee from the sunshine with a torch. Well, now go forward, step within the door. And there behold five hundred times much more of all sorts of such inward rarities, as please the mind will, and will feed the eyes with those which, if a Christian, thou wilt see, not small, but things of greatest moment be. In mysteries men soon do lose their way, and also turn it right, if thou wouldst know my riddle, and wouldst with my heifer plough, it lies there in the window. Fare thee well. My next may be to ring thy passing bell. John Bunyan